I'm turned with, with uh, Shane. We didn't get that fight, but then it was, this fight was waiting right around the corner and it's more title and everything. I yeah. mean, how do you, you know, how do you feel about just the way that things have turned out? Um, things have turned out great, you know. Um, I trained the canvas bench for minutes, you know, like I said, I've been there a long time training for multiple different fights. And, um, you know, when the Shane fight came apart, you know, I trained very hard for that fight. Mm -hmm. I was in it to win it and, you know, and, you know, things happened, but, you know, I, I kept it going. And I didn't slow down because I knew that something else was going to pop up, and another great opportunity popped up. How did it, how did it come about that you you you, were, you got the Clyde fight? Well, the the way the Clyde fight came up was down to the rankings. You know, when Margarito vacated the title, they had to look at number one and number two, mm -hmm. and just so be it. You know, I was I worked my way back to that position again. How do you feel about Claudio? Uh, what, what are some of the things you got to be ready for when he plays? Um, he's a very strong fighter. Um, he's very determined. But, you know, I say um, in the game of boxing, Pernell Whitaker told me a long time ago, you know, it, you know, when you got these new guys that never been to this hype of, 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 of life before, you know, and I call it the hype of life because it's an opportunity that Dr. Claudio has never seen before, lights, camera, action. You know, when you get to this hype, and he, you know, he, he's going to be more amazed by the event than what's going on inside the ring. Before he know it, it'll be over. So you think you're gonna? You've been through this. I've been through this. I know what it takes. Yeah, I'm mentally stronger than. Yeah. When did you first find out the difference between the regular events and the big events? What time? Um. You know what? I kind of been blessed. I kind of been blessed. You know, my first, my first professional fight, I fought on a, um, I was a co-main event on a Pernell Whitaker card in Miami. So that was a great opportunity. So I've been part of an HBO home base fighter and Showtime fighter for a long time. So I pretty much been around this for a long time. But I, I mean, I've seen the difference between a ballroom fight and a main Thomas and Jack fight, you know? So I, I, I know the difference. Been in camp for a really long time now. Yeah. Um, can you talk about how it's been maintaining that mental focus, switching fighters, you know, how physically you feel after such a long camp? Well, you know what? I think the training process from November to now was needed for, for Zab Jew. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, this fight is for my trainers. I mean, they always told me, Zab, you, you know, if you just been in a little bit more shape, nobody could beat you. You know what? And I and I and I made up my mind at this time I'm gonna try that. You know, and I'm, I'm, I really prepared myself well for this training camp, for this fight, for this opportunity, and I'm, I'm very excited. I cannot wait. Uh, were there particular sparring partners that you had to switch out? Um, it was a lot. I mean, we went through about ten different sparring partners, but like all of them got knocked out. I mean, this is literally no lie. I, I'm, I don't want to toot my own horn, but literally everyone was knocked out, and I had some tough, tough, rugged competitors. Had a sparring time with uh, Daniel Jacobs. A yeah, Danny, yeah, Danny Jacobs. Yeah. Can you talk about that a yeah, Danny Jacobs. Well, I went home. I had to go home to uh, take care of some. I've been at home, and I was in New York for two days, and we got a chance to spar with Danny Jacobs. He's a very young, fast fighter. You know, he, he got a great, a, a great career starting. But you know, even Danny had to fall into the hands of that dude. So Josh Cloudy is pretty experienced now. He had a fight with Margarita. Yeah. He's very steady. You know, right. you know, some guys start fast, some guys start slow. He seems like he's pretty steady throughout the fight. How do you go about sort of discouraging you know, his, his well, way of fighting? You know what, Dan? You hit, it right on the, you hit it right on the mark. He's a steady fighter, you know what I mean? I mean, if you watch some of the great fighters today, every some of the, all, all, all of the great fighters have gears. It's like it's, it's like a racing car. No car just runs on one gear. You know, when you when you, when, when you run in one gear, you're gonna burn out your clutch. You know what I mean? And a fighter such as Zab Judah, you know, I've you know I can start fast. You know what I'm saying? End up fast. I mean, in this fight, I'm gonna start and keep it up the same pace. It's gonna be great. I mean, but I'm gonna change a lot in this fight. You know, it's gonna be fast pace, slow pace, defense, flipping, moving, combinations. You know, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you, you, I mean, you are guaranteed to see a Zab Judah of the young again.